Clearing a block drain on the roof, how to use a sewer snake. Guys, when you've got a stoppage, sometimes if it's on an interior wall, you may not have any access. Now, to keep from pulling the toilet, we're coming up on the roof and running a sewer machine down, going through. Now, we've been on this house before and repaired other problems, but what we're trying to do here is clear a line we haven't worked on before and get a camera down it to look and see what the big problem is. But first, you gotta get up on the roof. All right guys, so as you can see, I'm just putting the head of my machine down in there. I'm gonna go ahead and reel some out and get it down towards the bottom. Now we've got about, this is a low pitch roof, eight foot ceiling, so we're probably 12 feet up. So I'm gonna go ahead and run some snake down, get it down to the bottom, and, and then turn it on and start cleaning it out. Now we're only going back over to the main. I know where the main goes out because we actually had to tunnel up under here and make a repair got about four or five years ago. And we replaced the sewer all the way out. Now there weren't any problems on this house when we tested it all held, but you know, anything's possible in five years. So we're gonna run this through, unclog it, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a camera down it just to see if we see any major problems or if maybe it's just a soft stoppage. <laughs> So I felt the stoppage a while ago. I felt it when it went through it. Actually, I heard just a little bit of noise, not a lot. I know that there was some water standing in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull it back out now, see if I have anything on my snake, and then what we'll do is run a camera down it to see if we can see anything. All right, now that's not good. That's roots. Unfortunately, that normally means there's a break down there or something like that. That's not a good sign, but it's where we're at. Okay, that's kind of what I was afraid of. My head protector is too big for this two inch line. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off. That's what I love about these stainless cameras. They're, they're still pretty daggum sturdy and heavy duty. But now I've got room to get down in there without any problems. That almost looks like roots right here. Kind of hard to tell. And those could have been right at the toilet. Brighten it up a little bit. Yeah, those look like roots right there. And this camera says we're only at about eight and a half, nine feet down. So that would put me down. Oh, we got more right there. That looks like roots, and that's gonna be coming in from the toilet because that's gonna be full line size. This other line, right there, that's probably just sludge and everything from the lavatory. But it looks like, right here coming up to the toilet, that looks like roots coming in from over at the lead vent. So I'll try to go past it. Yeah, we're gonna lose a camera and I'll lose my view. Okay, so there's the water coming right there. So that's gonna be the lavatory coming in from the right side, which makes perfect sense. And you see there's plenty of water coming down in there. So now I'm actually gonna go down through here just to And there's the big flush from the toilet. Okay. And it, yeah, there she comes. So now, I know we've got a lot of water down in there. Yeah. 
Yeah, look at those roots now. Man, you can really see that. So we're 11 feet down, so we're right at, man. So right there's the bottom and it turns. So see, somebody's done some work here. We've got the PVC. As I come back up, man, that, that's where the transition is. And we got roots right there. So what I'm gonna say at this point we need to do is we need to measure from the outside in find out how far it is to get over here to it and give our options. Either we pull the toilet and reset it because we're still on the vertical right there. So this is right at the bottom of that toilet stack. So either we jackhammer the floor, go in through down there, or what we do is we tunnel from outside. As you see, we're only probably three feet from the edge of the house. So she may want to come in from the outside to keep us from having big piles of dirt down inside of our house. And my question is, as a plumber, as, as you see the PVC's right here, we're still in a vertical, so they probably tied right down onto the bottom. And I don't know how long ago this was done. We didn't do that. We didn't come this far over. But what kind of how much more work would it have been to check it out and see? And, and like I said, I don't know how long this has been going on, anything about it, but that didn't look too good. Crazy loud. That's why I did it like that. That's cool. a good sound. <laughs> that is a good sound. That, that's money. So guys, as you see, it's not always as bad as it looks. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't good for the customer because we know that there's root intrusion into the sewer system. The good thing is we know about where it is just by the camera showing us. Now, since there was already PVC run all the way over here, that makes me think they've had this problem in the past. Now, did the plumber not go far enough? There's a lot of roots in there. Now, could that just be four or five years? Absolutely, but man, did the plumber not go far enough? I mean, don't get me wrong, we're talking probably 15, 20 feet, but once you're that far, did he check it? I don't know. And I'm not saying anything bad, but you've still got some cast iron under there that could have possibly been replaced. So my thought is if I'm that far, why not go ahead, charge them a little bit more, remove the toilet, change the flange, change the sante, change everything under the slab to PVC. Now don't get me wrong, I've left some that maybe were in the concrete that, look, it's gonna take a lot of jackhammer and a lot of structural to get to this problem. So I've changed those out before. But then again, also times I haven't changed them out before. And I don't know what was going on at the time, but I know that's a lot of roots to be coming in from the toilet. So what I will do here is I will give her two options. We can either tunnel from the outside, get down under it, rebuild everything. We may still have to go in and pull and reset the toilet, but that's about the worst of the inside part. Replace the flange. But the other option is we go in, we remove that toilet, we jackhammer the floor up, dig down through that bathroom and replace everything there from the PVC up to possibly the vent in the wall. But guys, this isn't hard to do. If this is something you've done before, a repair like this, please leave a comment down below and let me know. And if you use something different up on the roof that you think's better, I like my little rigid K400s. Don't get me wrong, it's not a super powerful motor, but for what I did today, it's perfect, it's small, it's easy to lug around. I can actually bring it up, carry it down all by myself without any problems, and I'm an old man. So do me a favor, leave me a comment down below and let me know what you use in a situation like this, and if you love it and it makes you money. Hope you've enjoyed it, guys. Check out some of these other videos about plumbing, if you want to learn more things that you can do to learn to make money. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.